Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we're looking at a drive bay from Isidoc. This one fits in a five and a quarter inch drive bay and you can insert four two and a half inch drives, hard drives or solid state drives. It has a couple of features that makes this quite interesting for a retro PC and we're going to use this in a project being able to install several operating systems on one machine and conveniently through buttons at the front to select which operating system we want. So let's quickly go over the features as they are advertised on the box. The unit has a fan at the rear and there's a fan control dial at the front which is very convenient. If we're using solid state drives we can turn the fan to a lower speed and if we're using mechanical drives we can uh, turn it up for some better cooling. We can install two and a half inch drives with a drive height of up to a nine and a half millimeters. We can install four drives all up. It supports hot swapping and it uses the zero ATA interface with up to six gigabits per second. There's some more information at the back of the box. So we have got four SATA connectors. It is powered by a single SATA power connector. Uh, the fan is 40 millimeters. And we also got some LEDs here, solid blue light for power and flashing blue light when we have hard drive activity. It is made out of uh, metal, the body, but there are some partial plastic parts involved. And it's time now to have a look in the box and see what is inside. Here we've got the user manual. I had a quick look. There's nothing really that uh, needs proper explaining. Everything seems to be quite straightforward. We've got a bag of screws for installing the drive bay into the computer case. So here we've got the drive. Let's have a closer look. We've got the four drive bays and basically you just take a drive and you slide it in. There is no, uh, there are no drive trays, so everything is uh, really quick and easy. Just push the eject button and the drive comes out. Let's try a solid state drive. So the process is the same. Let's go with this drive bay. Just push it in and here's your eject button. We also have the power buttons here so each bay can be powered on and off individually and here is the fan control. Okay let's have a look at the back of the unit what's going on here. So quite a few things here we've got the SATA connector so we've got two over there and two more over here. This is for the SATA power so this powers the entire drive. In terms of speed, there are no uh, SATA bridges or converter chips going on. So this is connected directly to the motherboard. So you're getting the same speed as if these drives are connected directly to the motherboard. We've got the fan here and there's also a switch. So we can actually turn the fan off um, all the way. Actually, this is not a switch that seems to be yeah, it's a jumper. Okay, so you just remove it. So the fan can be disabled all the way. So if you're mostly working with solid state drives, you can actually turn off the fan uh, altogether or you can switch it, uh, set the jumper to the on position to have the fan on and then we can control the fan speed with the dial at the front. Okay, so let's see this drive bay in action. The computer I've put together is a Pentium 4. It's got two SATA ports built in and one thing I noticed is that initially the fan doesn't seem to be doing anything but that's because all the drive bays are turned off so if all the drive bays are turned off the fan will also turn off. Something else I noticed when hooking up the SATA ports at the back at first I wasn't sure which SATA port uh, at the back uh, maps to which of these Base and it was quite straightforward. There's two SATA ports on the left side and there are two SATA ports on the right side and there are little arrows. There's one pointing up for this bay and there's one pointing down for this bay and same on this side. So it's really straightforward to figure out which port connects to which drive bay. So all the bays are powered off. Um, the plan is to install two operating systems. I'm going to go with Windows XP and Windows uh, 2000. I've got a couple of Disks here. Let's go with the 64 gig SSD. Let's put it in this drive bay and let's power it on. And we're going to go with 120 gig SSD for the other operating system and we power it on here. Let's do a quick restart and the BIOS should pick up those drives just fine. So let me just press delete to get into the BIOS. In terms of fan noise, on maximum it 
is a little bit louder compared to what comes out of the case with the CPU fan cooler and the power supply. But turning it just a little bit to the left and we can't hear it anymore. So yeah, the fan is definitely nice and quiet. Also, the fan has a three pin header, so that means it's user replaceable. So if you uh, ever want to put another fan on there, that's really easy to do. So here we can see the hard drives. Both are showing up just here. So, okay, let's have a look and see this device in action. So I powered on the first hard drive. Because the motherboard only has two SATA connectors, I used a silicon image PCI SATA controller, which has four ports and I've installed four operating systems on each one of them. So the first one should be MS-DOS uh, 6.22 that loaded just now. So let's power off the machine. We're gonna turn the power off for this drive bay and we're gonna turn on the next one and have a look at what operating system we've got for this one. So in this drive we have MS-DOS 7.1. Let's turn off the machine. We're gonna turn off the power for this drive bay, turn on the power for the next one and turn it on and let's find out which operating system we've got installed on this one. So on this drive bay we've got Windows 98. So let's quickly shut down the machine. We're gonna turn the power off for this drive bay and turn it on for the last one and let's have a look what's installed on this one. And the final operating system is Windows Millennium Edition. So what's the verdict? Well there's a lot I really like. The convenience of not having to use a tray and being able to just slide the drive in and easily eject it, that's something I really like. I also like the whole cooling system that the fan is removable, that you can turn it off, that you have a uh, speed dial at the front, that's also very nice. Having the individual power buttons is what made this project possible. There are a lot of devices that uh, have four drives in a five and a quarter inch bay, but not with the power buttons where you can turn individual bays on and off. I also like the labels here that shows you where this port connects. So this one has an arrow pointing up, so this one connects to the uh, top drive bay on the left side. The SATA ports are also directly connected. There's no bridge, chip or conversion going on. So you're getting the full speed as if your drives are connected directly to the motherboard. I had a look on Newegg and Amazon and the going rate seems to be around $51. They also come with a three year warranty. If I had to nitpick and pick an area where IC Doc could improve this unit, it is for me with the power buttons. They're a little bit tricky uh, to push in and out. You kind of have to use your fingernails because the uh, buttons don't stick out far enough. Um, that's really the only uh, area for improvement that I've noticed. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for ICDoc for sending me the unit and let me down below in the comments what do you think of this device and uh, do you prefer using software multi-booting or do you find uh, a hardware solution more convenient. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another video.